Hello there and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno and today we're going to be painting this bumblebee on lavender. I'm going to be doing it in my Viviva Colors uh, travel sketchbook because now that it's summer I'm hoping to get outside and do some painting outside. Obviously the painting portion of this is going to apply in any situation so you can just paint this on your regular watercolor paper using your regular paints and brushes but I thought I would just um, give you a quick peek at this travel kit. If you do like this tutorial, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and to see more uh, beginner friendly tutorials, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's jump in and get started. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be using my Viviva Colors travel kit. This is an A6 size. And the kit is a vegan leather blue. It's quite nice. And it comes with an elastic strap to just keep it closed. And inside it comes with an A6 sketch pad. There's 24 uh, sheets, 48 pages because you can paint on both sides. It is not a cotton paper and it is also a hot pressed finish. Okay, so it's not, um, not cold press, it's, it's quite smooth. It also comes with a black liner pen. This is a, I can't see because of the glare. It's a Kuretake Zig cartoonist marker and I believe it's water soluble. Yes, it's water soluble. So you have to be careful that it's completely dry if you're gonna do ink first and then go over it with watercolor. But um, I'll just show you that it writes quite nicely, quite nice. So that will come in handy if you like to do like urban sketching and you wanna just do a quick sketch with that and then maybe paint it when you get home. Um, this just slides in through the back sleeve, through the little slot here. It also comes with a water brush. I've already filled this water brush and the brush itself has quite a nice point on it. You can see there. And the cap conveniently snaps onto the back so you don't have to worry about leaving that or losing it here. It just kind of clicks in. So that is the water brush. And then it comes with a pack of the Viviva color sheets. This is their um, standard color sheet booklet. And I did a video um, demo on this. I will put a link to that in the description box if you are interested in the Viviva color sheets. Also, if you do want to order something from Viviva Colors, make sure you use my discount code so you get that discount on your checkout, okay? So as you can see, I've already gone through and swatched these and used them in that previous video. Here are the colors that come in the standard set and this just slides in here like that. Okay, so the idea is that we can just have everything at our disposal while we're out sketching outside. There is your little palette. The only thing I had a bit of an issue with here that I'm trying to figure out is I can't slide this in that sleeve and have that little palette open. So what I wanted to try was folding the top cover over, sliding it in like that, and there I have access to my palette. So that is the solution to that. So I think that will work quite nicely. So now we'll just dive in and start painting our lavender with our little bumblebee on it. Okay, so I tried this with a water brush and it's not quite working for me. So I'm going to do it just with my regular brush. So I've got some of this violet here. And I'm going to mix it in with a little bit of black just to tone it down a bit. And we're going to just do these little teardrop lavender shapes, little bud shapes. So that's going to be my first stem and I think that's where I'll put my B. And then I'm just going to do some off to the side. So I'm just doing really rough 
oval shapes. Really rough. Do one over here. My head's a little foggy today. I don't know if I mentioned what brush I'm using. It's a size two. And we'll do one here. And then sometimes you get little lavender buds that grow and then there's a little space between on the stem and you get another little clump of them down here. So we'll just leave some space there. And we don't need too many. Maybe another one uh, here. Okay, so you can see I'm just doing them really loosely. Maybe another one. Hmm. Maybe just a little short one over here. Um, I don't know if this is quite balanced. I think it's okay. Now I'm going to mix up a stronger version of that lavender or violet with the black. I'm going to take all the, the water off my brush, just tip into that, and just tap on our lavender buds. Just to give them some shape. I'm going to try not to do too much because we can always go in and add to it. And this is hot press paper too, so the paint doesn't tend to travel so much. It tends to stay where you put it. So if I'm not happy with it, I can just go in with my brush and kind of move things around a bit. Just like so. Okay, really loose. And you can see it's not traveling so much. So I'm going to clean my brush off, tap it off on my paper towel, and just kind of soften some of these edges. If you're using a cold press paper, yours is going to travel a little more. So just let it sit before you go back and touch it up. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with an even darker mixture. Get some of that black in there too. Just like that. And very little on my brush. I'm just going to tap in some of those areas that are still wet. Just so our lavender pops a little bit. Just do the odd full bud in this dark value. like so. So this just adds to the looseness of our lavender. So I want it really simple. So quite loose. So while that's dry, I'm going to put in the body for our bee. And I'm just going to use this chrome yellow. And your bee is going to have um, a few sections to them. Let me get a little bit more of that yellow. It's quite bright. So his main body section is going to be like an oval and we want it kind of curved. Okay, so it's like a curved oval. So that'll be his main body. Then he's going to have another little section 
up here. And then on top of that section will be his head. I think maybe I went a little high. I'm going to have to put a little bit of a another lavender bud up here. So it looks like he's trying to get the nectar out of it. And I want him to completely dry. So while he's drying, I'm going to go into my sap green. And in this palette, it's not really sap green. It's more like an olive green. So if you have an olive green, use that. If you don't, you can use sap green and just add um, a little bit of purple to it just to tone it down. Okay, so I'm coming up to these stems. I'm also putting some in between where the little buds are. So all the way up. Put some little pokes of green in there like so. Do this guy. Whoops, that was a little thick. It's all good. It's okay. Little hits of the green up here. Then I'm going to go into the sap green again. Really right from the palette so it nice it's nice and dark. And I'm just going to add a few more blades of grass in or stems. They can be whatever. I'm just doing this loose. You can even put some little dots at the end if you want. Just to add a little bit of interest. I could probably even be using a bigger brush at this point because I'm going to do some thicker blades of grass. Like that. Now I'm going to go right into the palette so I get really dark green and just put some little hits of a really dark green in here. More, the my brush is almost dry. Okay, so we're getting some really dark green just to add some texture to the bottom, like so. And now we're going to go and just touch up or finish up our bumblebee. So I'm going to go to the black now. Now this is called slate black. So you could use like a Payne's gray if you wanted as well, because this isn't going to be really dark. So I have to be careful because these paints reactivate really quickly or really easily rather. So I don't want to yeah, he's dry. I don't want this to kind of mush all over the place, so I'm going to just tap in some black for his little bum. I'm going to do his head while I'm at it. So it's just going to be like a half circle kind of. I'll leave a little highlight on there. And I'm going to clean off my brush and just touch the black on his bum so it softens out a bit. And I'll do the same thing with a stripe here. 
just a thin stripe because I'm also going to go in and soften that and that will kind of bleed out when I do that. So clean and dry off my brush. Just hit that a little bit. I don't want to get carried away because I don't know how much it's going to travel at this point. Some can kind of go up into that upper section of his body. And while that's kind of wet, I'm going to go in with a wet brush and just drag this out for a wing, just like that. It's very pale because I can go in and add little hits of black, but I just just want, but I just want to let that bleed out for now and see how it goes. And while that's bleeding out, we'll go and put in some little antennae on his head, and we can do his feet, feet, his legs, I guess. And they're always kind of bending down a little bit. I want to be careful. I don't want this to bleed. I want it to be loose, but I don't want it to bleed and get away on me. Then I'm going to just take a lighter mixture, light gray. Get all the water off my brush. And I'm just going to tap his wing a bit. Just so it's got a little interest in there just like that so I like the way that's bleeding out and I just want to heavy up his black a little bit and I want it to bleed because I want this to look kind of loose maybe drag it up there a little bit So now I'm just going to go back to this violet because I find our lavender's gotten a little dull maybe. So I'm going to go back in with this bright violet and just put a few little hits of it here and there. Just like that. I don't know if I should put a little stinger on his bum or not. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think if I mess around with it anymore, he's just going to look like a big mush ball. So that's it. There's our really loose lavender with a little bumblebee. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. Is this plain air painting? No, but it kind of gave me some practice for it. And I do know I really need to work on the water brush or just keep a little brush in this little kit. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for joining me and for supporting my channel as always. Take care and I will see you next time.